Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 10th episode of Oakland Tobacconist Live. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Wednesday night. It is 6 o'clock here in California, and we are going to be featuring a cigar I'm very excited about. The brand itself is somewhat new to me, uh, and we're going to have the blender on with us, Jonas Santana. He's going to be uh, joining us, talking about some of his brands, known as Blackbird Cigars, and also the cigar that we are featuring this week, which this week is uh, the Vince which is a Mexican San Andreas Maduro 6x50 box press released by the LCA. I'm actually kind of cheating this time around because normally I wait and smoke this cigar uh, on our um, on our tasting night, which is this Friday. Uh, but we're actually going to be smoking this with um, the blender tonight. And so we're going to see what this cigar is all about. Feel free to drop any comments. Let us know what you're smoking. Let us know what you're drinking. Love to hear. And also, if you have any questions for either myself or Jonas, I feel I would love to read them aloud and ask them. So if you're watching, let us know if you're smoking anything. Let us know if you're drinking anything, what the pairing is like. This particular cigar, as I say, is a, a uh, rather soft box press. So it has sort of a kind of almost a rectangle um, push to it, soft round edges. And then the foot band is the Vince right here on the bottom. And it actually, the uh, it is a closed foot, but it is sort of a pigtail foot. You can either take that off or you can go ahead and light it up as is. I'm actually going to probably light it up as is. Uh, and the Vince actually comes from the uh, the character name of Tom Cruise in the movie The Color of Money. So we're going to kind of see where that is from. And that's sort of indicative by the eight ball on either side of the foot band. So we're going to go ahead and get this cut and lit. As I say, this is the first time I've actually tried this cigar, so I'm pretty excited. Most of the time, LCA, uh, when they give us a release, they tend to be on the Habano sort of mild to medium in strength. Um, and so kind of excited to have a Maduro on this one in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and light this up. We're going to give it a bit of a toast. Now, you can, when you have a closed foot like this, um, hey, how's it going, Curtis? How you doing? Been mean to mention since you asked. New mic sounds great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Glad you're joining us. Smoking the Vince and drinking Knob Creek 15. Not a bad cigar at all. A drink at all. So thank you, Matt. Um, but I'm actually, instead of toasting the cigar, I'm going to go ahead and light it up to get more of that wrapper taste right up at the front. And uh, we'll see where it lands us. Definitely seems like this is going to be in the medium plus the full body, but oftentimes when a cigar first starts, it has more pepper and strength up at the front. Hey, Francis, smoking hyena again. Awesome. To the show and the Vince. Awesome. So any of you who are watching the show, if you would like to pick up this cigar, unfortunately, it's not available right now, but it will be available online uh, Friday. It's going to drop online Friday and also be available on the shop. Now we are doing a specific tasting night for this cigar. We're going to be having a pairing drink for it. It includes the cigar itself. It's a pre-reservation event. Either contact me, text, call, DM me, whichever, and I will reserve a spot for you. Or we just now, very fancy, is you can click on the link in this video and that will direct you to tickets that you can buy online, which is valid for Friday night at six o'clock. So if you'd like to go ahead and pick up a spot, don't hesitate. Hit that button, go ahead and reserve your spot because they are very limited, very limited spots. So if you'd like to experience the Vince altogether, then we're going to go ahead and try that on Friday and make sure you get your ticket for it. So right up front, I'm getting a lot of almost dark chocolate, dark earth, a little bit of pepper. The pepper's kind of dying down a little bit, um, but we're going to actually have Jonas join us uh, and we're going to hear more about the cigar. So if you can all help me welcome... Jonas to Oakland Tobacconist. How's it going? Hey, hey, what's up, man? Thank you so much for joining us. Can you hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're all good. Where are you uh, Where are you coming to us from? Right now, I'm in Miami. I'm at the warehouse. Okay. Okay. And do you, do you spend a lot of your time in Miami, or are you in the DR, or kind of both? This is what I call home right now. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm from the DR, uh, born and raised over there. The factories over there. The reason why I'm in in the cigar industry is because, uh, you know, uh, they call Tamborillo as the cigar capital of the world. That's what. So the yeah. first, let me tell, let me just tell you the first time I know I saw somebody smoking a cigar was my great grandmother. 
that I got to, let's say, enjoy her for about 17 years of my life. And she was smoking cigars one a day, every day, okay. since the age of 15 years. And she died at the age of 108. <laughs> so don't tell me smoking kills because I'm going to give you the story right away. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you again here at, in California, Oakland Tobacco. And this is somewhat of a newer shop. Uh, we'll be around. It'll be hitting our two-year anniversary this August. And so um, I think the first time I heard of your brand, Blackbird Cigars, I actually attended the TPE last year in Vegas. Um, and I might have seen you there. I believe you guys were there. Um, yeah, yeah. But we, we're now getting introduced for the first time here at the shop through the Vince, through the LCA. Yeah, yeah. So before we kind of delve into uh, this this blend and kind of the story behind it, I do want to actually ask, what are you smoking tonight and what are you pairing it with? Actually, I'm smoking one of my cigars. What I'm doing right now is the Sumatra wrapper. This is the Rook. Okay. The Rook, okay. And uh, what are you pairing it with? I For some reason, I like this Panamanian rum. Mm. Have you got it before? Uh, no, I have seen it, but I've actually never tried it. That one, I don't know. I, I, the thing is, it's not, it's not peppery. It's, okay. it's not sweet. So I think yeah. it's right in the middle. I believe that when you drink a very sweet rum, the hangover is worse. Is worst. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, yeah. it, and if you if you double check that when you drink rum with a or with Coke or let's say any color drink you get more hangover, more than the clear drinks. People were yeah. telling me that. I didn't believe it. But now that I have more age and things like that, yeah, it does. It, it really okay. makes a difference. Yeah. Do you find yourself, uh, are you more of a rum drinker or do you like whiskey or is it kind of back and forth? I think I prefer rum because, you know, in, in, in Dominican Republic, what we drink over there is the Brugar brand. So when you, you don't really need to wait until 21 years to drink. Over there, you start actually okay. any uh, the, over there. We don't celebrate sweet sixteen. We do the fifteen. Okay. So we go to the fifteen. You already having drinks for everybody. I'm not gonna say that's the best thing. But <laughs> I got to start drinking like a fifteen. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes okay. Sometimes not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, we, we got Risen Misfits watching, and he just drops the comment. Uh, I think it's true. I've had vodka, and Hangover is not bad for sure. So less sweet, I suppose, in vodka, <laughs> and it's a clear. Um, so I, I would like to ask, where where did the cigar journey start for you? Like, what what where how did you get into the industry? Well, actually, I was in college still, um, and I had a friend that called me saying that he needed a, a marketing guy. I was like six months before graduated. So I just jump in the company, and I'm gonna, not gonna mention the name just to respect. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, anything bad about about that? So the thing is, I was telling them what I feel in the business. So the industry, I think, already had. You know, everything changed in generations. So I believe that already the old school looking, just say labels, already have done a lot of things. So I think. There was a time to change for to more simplistic, more colorful. Um, and when I was telling that to my friend over there, he said, I don't think we're not ready for that. So I decided to move on and, and I jumped with my brother. And he he liked the idea. He was actually th thinking about that. And we started working with Blackbird. But actually, before we had the Blackbird stuff, we did a brainstorming about what brands we were supposed to have. And after we got all of that, then we be, we came with the name of, of Blackbird Cigars. Okay, okay. Oh. So did you did you grow up like kind of around cigars and around the factories in Dominican Republic? 10 minutes away from Tom Maria, where everybody's making make the cigars. 10 minutes away. Okay. So now, I now, well, I was going to say, did you have family involved as well, or was it something that you just had an interest for? My my only family was my great grandmother, and nobody uh, nobody of them were really in the cigar business. I know my uncle and things like that used to grow tobacco for to sell to other guys, but they didn't really have like a brand or or a company. They were guys farmers, really helping other companies. But what's the okay. scale? 
So I can actually, me and my brother consider ourselves as first, first generation in okay. having a factory, having a brand, really trying to make it in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, is it you or your brother or both that do the blending for your brand? Well, we, we have a master blender. Actually, he okay. was my mentor 10 years ago. He was the one that teach me everything. And okay. what we always do over there, we actually, we, we like him to shine. Like, okay. real thing, but I'm the, I'm the guy that is always in the streets. So I know what the customer is looking for. So yeah. I'm the one that bring him the information. This is what we need. He make it happen. Sometimes I come up with the idea. Sometimes he just come up with the idea. So we kind of do it together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 And um, being that you gr kind of grew up in Dominican Republic, are most of your blends all Dominican or do you work with Nicaraguan, Honduras? Something that I can tell you is that I have only one cigar that have 90% Dominican tobacco, which is the gray band, the Cuco. Okay. Okay. So uh, the thing is when we started in this, after the marketing aspect, we believe that we cannot make more dominican taste cigars because there's a lot of dominican companies that we already respect but how are we really going to make the noise we if we're going to make the noise outside of the marketing aspect we need to make noise with the blend and okay. then after the blend is the construction yeah 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 okay so so after starting starting up your own brand what was the first did you launch with just one uh one uh facing or did you launch with multiple different cigars like what did that launch look like we did the crow and back okay. then was the raven now the name is unkind so okay. we launched a san andreas wrapper it was uh toro 54 by 6 robusto uh, 50 by 5 and a 60 by 7 uh double toro okay same thing with the with the raven so we had the san andreas and we have the ray uh, the cuban brazil wrapper I we launched with those two brands and we did the, the bundle cigar, which was the next. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm sorry, you said that the second one, the what was the Raven, now the unkind. What what blend is that? The Raven is, is the Cuba Brazilian wrapper. It has okay. a final binder in the village. You're gonna find HBA, Corojo, Pennsylvania, a little bit of Creole 98, most okay. of them beats of tobacco. Okay. And so do those fall more in the medium or full or mild? I can say that the, the, the on kind is a little tricky because it's actually medium, but when you light it up the first inch, you're going to get like a, like a bomb of flavors and pepper as well at the same time. But mm -hmm. the thing, when you come to the second third, everything mellows. And in the last mm -hmm. third, everything from the first third, you're going to feel it again, more intense, but no pepper at all. So I can consider kind the most changeable, if that's right to say, a blend that we create in the line because it changes okay. dramatically. Awesome, and and so it, you're saying it's more more complex as it transitions through the cigar with the with the changes the the yeah. other change but not three times. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So um, with that, what what year was it that you launched Blackbird? We had the first batch in January 2019. 2000. Okay, okay. So and right now. Start, starting in 2019, and as everyone, I mean, whether retailer, whether blender, manufacturer, all face the the interesting year of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, how how many different uh, cigars do you have right now? Like different different blends. Coraline, we have six plus the bundle. Okay. Coraline six bundle cigars and a couple of exclusives that we do some so to certain retail shops or, for example, Privada has some exclusives like the beans, like the Fast Eddie. The Idalia, there's like two more that we have done yeah. that are exclusive for them. So, but Coraline is six. Okay. Okay. And of course, now that we, let's say, we're not new anymore. We are a little getting to more to, to the mature side. So mm -hmm. now we're already working in our first limited edition nationwide. Okay. Okay. And um, have you, as you say, you kind of have a master blender that was your mentor. Were yeah. you, Prior to the br uh, brand launching, were you blending anything else in, in like the back scenes? Repeat that again. Oh, like before Blackbird launched, um, as he was mentoring you, were you doing a lot of other blending for like other companies or for like test blends or? 
I was working with the master blender, but you know, let's say I don't have the palette that he has. He has over 40 years in the business. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I developed a couple of private labels. Yes. Yes, we did. Yes. Uh when when I when I was working at the other company. But after that, the thing is honestly, I was really taking notes to see what would be the best way to really penetrate the USA market in the cigar okay. industry. Which I know it's very hard. It's not easy at all. It's not yeah. possible, but it's not uh easy. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a young guy, 30, 30 years. You know that the most of the guys that you see in pictures, owners of brands, they don't have my age the most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have traditions, decades of experience. You know this, Robert. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Family to family. So I right. know I was already working against a wall like that. So yeah. I really need, needed to play, let's say, smart. Yeah. So, well, and I think, too, in a young brand, um, especially like i mean you have your blends and that's really the heart of it and then you also have your labels and your your graphic design and all of that um mm -hmm. are you pretty instrumental on the the art is that your brother is it kind of a combination what's that like okay it's a combination i have a graphic designer over here that is very brilliant he he used to work with another uh, in the industry with another company as well but he moved to to my company after a couple of things and we always were, we were brainstorming, me and my brother and the graphic designer to make this happen. So I gave, let's say, let's just say 65% of the ideas because I was always the one in the strips. And of course he got to draw everything the way we wanted and yeah. more of yeah. ideas that I really need to get, give him credit for that because he was the one that gave uh, life to the ideas that we had. Okay, okay, yeah. We have we have another question from Risen Misfits. This is actually a question I normally ask towards the end, but I'll ask it now. Um, do you remember what what the first premium hand rolled cigar was that you had? As a brand, I don't remember, but I, I really remember it was the Maduro. I was okay. I was sweating cold because back in the days I didn't even smoke hookah or whatever. So yeah. I was really <laughs> sweating cold, and some some of my friends <laughs> was really joking around with me, and he made it <laughs> because that was the funny guy of the day. Yeah. <laughs> full body then um and then okay so from there did did you have to like ease yourself into smoking again or like no, after that, i spent like two days without smoking after that i just keep trying and things like that yeah. there was something interesting about that uh yeah. i call it i think the cigar thing is like i don't know golf you know that when you're in golf you always talk business i think the same way with the cigars you know, you, you get to sit down with a doctor or with an architect or with an engineer. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of people that the end of their day, they come to a place to chill, to relax. Right. And you talk a lot of different things that you can, if you actually pay attention to everything, you will learn. Yeah. And most of the time, we're people way older than me. So I was, I always say that if you really see How's the human being made? Which is, this is something stupid, but that but many people really pay attention. You have two years and one mouth. So when you are growing and getting inside to something that you don't really know too much, bro, pay attention, sit down, relax, smoke a cigar, and pay attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so as a new brand um, launching in 2019, how was it that you uh, started meeting Brian from Provada Cigar Club? Like, how how'd that come about? I think it was uh, around. I think it was like around August of 2019 because the thing is when we came, we actually came strong because people were like the first two, three months was like, eh. But after that, the Instagram stuff helped a lot to discover more yeah. of the rubber. And I was, of course, knocking doors, getting to different cities. Bro, if, if they count my, my miles or hours of traveling, I can be a pilot, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> so uh, uh, Brian has been a dude that uh, I cannot thank him a lot, uh, like enough. But at the same time, if you look at the uh, in a wall that he has a couple of drawings, you're gonna see my face because yeah. he, if I'm, I'm, I am one of the companies that actually help him to have quality product for his projects. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So w when you say like traveling around um, and and kind of starting out. 
uh, with that. And then you meet, you meet Brian. Did he contact you or did you contact him? He contacted me through Instagram, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have a question from Francis uh, saying that what, I mean, we can kind of get to the, the Vince cigar. Um, before though, I want to congratulate you. As you mentioned, Instagram kind of like social media. I saw that you guys just hit 15,000 followers. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's Congrats great. on that. Do you, like are you the one that, are you the one that heads up the Instagram? Right now, everything. Um, I have less time, but the thing yeah. is, I think that the only way people can feel or touch uh, the brand is is the man behind the brand. So um, when I talk to them, well, they ask something in Instagram. I'm the one talking to them. I really want to know um, how deep they want to go into the conversation. I want to really respond to everybody. Sometimes I'm not capable of doing it. Of course, there's levels that, yeah. that you reach, and eventually you're going to pass – some uh, of the works to some some staff capable to do right it. right but right either, either even like that it, as soon as i have a staff like that i really want to know what's going on over there yeah and I, I really want to keep talking with the guys directly because yeah. that's the only way if they never meet me in life that's the only way they're going to be talking to me yeah 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 so nobody let's say nobody really going to talk the way i talk about blackbird like i do Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, right. They can do whatever effort they do, which I will respect a lot. But you know, everything comes from 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 the bottom, and that bottom was me suffering over there. During yeah. The, until we got to the point right now, there's more to do. But you know, everything starts somewhere. Right, right, right. So we're having a few questions um, about the Vince cigar. So we'll kind of delve into that. Um, first question being is. I mean, so far, what I'm enjoying, a, a note that I'm really noticing off of this cigar is the sweetness. Mexican San Andreas sometimes, out of some of the blends, you have a lot of pepper. It can be very chocolate, but it's it's actually, I would say it's medium plus, maybe, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, medium, medium plus, um, but full flavor and definitely like a sweeter, earthy chocolate note. Uh, what made you land on Mexican San Andreas for the Vince blend? Actually, the thing is, that blend comes originally from the fast edit. So uh, if I'm not wrong, um, Brian shipped me some cigars to the Dominican Republic, and he said, I want you to make something better than that. Okay. Okay. I don't even remember. He told me what it was. He said, I just want you to make something better than that. I'm just going to let you know that it's a San Andreas Mexican rapper. And we just jump on it. We start working. You know, he said, well, bro, we need something complex. We need something... That is that the, the strength is not more than the flavors. So actually, when he said that, uh, in some way, it was kind of easy because every time we do a blend, we don't focus on the strength. Even that I want to give you that kick, I know that to really give you the full experience, I will need to balance the flavors and the strength so you can really appreciate everything at the same time. If I give you too much punch, you're only going to feel punch in your face but if i yeah. give you flavors i can keep you dancing with the music you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah okay so you say it was released under the fast eddie was that that cigar was that for like provada members yeah that was for provada members we did uh if i'm not wrong like a 50 by four and a half and then he said we need to work now with the veins and we're gonna twitch a little bit the blend so we we're gonna make the fast eddie and because he said that the fast eddie was a hit so he said, we need something similar Not okay. different because, you know, Privada always keep everything rare, which I respect, which I believe is something of his success. Now giving the same thing to everybody. So we just switch it a little bit and we make that masterpiece right there. So okay. the reason why he bring it to the LCA is because a lot of people from the membership were asking too much about that. He said, you know what? I think we need to bring it to the shops as well because uh, that way, the retailers and the consumers can uh, keep smoking the cigar or benefit from it because it's a hit. I don't know how many we're going to make, but we did a lot. I don't know if it's, we're going to have a second round, but at the end of the day, it's people opinion. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. We have uh, uh, Jamie Kennedy saying, good evening. What's up, Jonas? Maybe you know uh, him. Um, <laughs> oh, that from the Ash Tappers, I believe. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So, so from the fast Eddie, the Vince, where did the name come about? Cause I know it's, it's, I know it's in correlation with uh, the color of money, Tom Cruise. Um, but is that something that you came up with? Was that on Brian or was that collaboration? No idea over there was Brian. I okay. have, I, we have a couple of ideas that we're going to make it from my brain, but that's something that he picked up. You okay. know, Tell you, it's not very hard to find names in the cigar industry. So he's actually very good at looking at a different picture. He's very good at uh, at, at writing the, the the full story of our, of the concept that we're working with. So both are from uh, two different movies, if I'm not wrong. I think I'm okay. not wrong. At all. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we came with that because if you if you if you take a look, the base is is something short, two syllables, and it's gonna be very very easy to remember. That's yeah. something that Blabber actually focuses a lot to keep short names when it's a core line or if it's a limited edition. Um, we can be bigger, let's say, in 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 work, but we need to keep it simple at the same time. Okay. Yeah. 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 So for those watching, uh, the Vince is available on our website actually uh, this Friday. It's going to be dropping online, also in shop. If you'd like to pick one up. They're in limited quality. As Jonas has said, it's a rare cigar. So if you want to pick one up, make certain that you don't hesitate. It's available on Friday. Also, what we do here at the shop is we do uh, exclusive tasting nights. We'll have a cigar, pair it with a whiskey or a bourbon, scotch, something like that, um, and see how those flavors work in conjunction. We light it together, cut it together, experience the cigar as a group. If you'd like to do that, go ahead and click on the link. They'll take you to our ticket page. They're very limited quality as well, quantity as well. So make certain that you get your ticket in as well. So um, you, you said, uh, Jonas, that this started out as a, a four and a half by 52. Is that right? The Fast Eddie? Yeah, I can look it up right now if you allow me to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so in the beginning, shorter cigar. And was it was it Brian or was it you that wanted to do a Toro? No, it was Brian again. Because he said, we need to switch a little bit, but we cannot switch it too much. Yeah, because it was a hit already. So you know you cannot get go, you cannot go crazy about it. You need right, to, right, right. You need to keep it a little similar, but you know that the size make a little change anyways, even if it's the same blend in the in the experience of the smoke. So I look right. I'm looking right now at the fast Eddie. Yeah, know, the size. Yeah, we'll see. The thing is, he don't even have any anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fifty by four. In what three quarter? Okay, three slash so quarter. How you say that? So yeah, it's like a short robusto almost. But it was okay. a box press. It was also a foot pigtail that you don't okay. see that very often as well. Yeah, but most of the time you have a head pigtail. Right, and and yeah, what's what's the kind of thought behind that? I mean, uh, w with with having a a foot pigtail, do you normally on that cigar? Do you normally toast it? Do you normally light it right away? I'm I light it right away. And okay. like, I'll tell you, that was the first time I do a foot picture. Okay. Okay. First time. But I light it up right away. Some people try to clip it, but you don't need to because eventually it's going to drop. Right. Right, right, right. It's going to drop right away within, I don't know, maybe in less than a minute. It's going to drop. Yeah. But it, it, actually, you really need to know how to make that cigar because when you make that cigar, you need to let it age a little bit just with the binder and filler. And then you put the wrapper because you know that it doesn't have any place for the airflow in the cigar to age because you you oh right right it. right right you don't have any airflow there yeah so you need to age it a little bit with the, before putting the wrapper on okay okay and, and do you it. when you're when you're blending or coming out with new brand or even smoking um do you have a preference box pressed parejo do you, do you have okay. a or or just like on a smoking experience average, do you like to smoke box press? Do you like to smoke Parejo, like rounded, or? I like I'll, regular cigars to, to, to smoke the and blend. Because the, let me tell you, when you press a, a cigar, when you box press a cigar, you're doing that to the tobacco. The, the oils uh, uh, gets more uh, condensed, let's just say it that way. Okay. And actually that changes the flavor as well. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's say if you want to smoke something in, let's say, how you call it when when the animals are in Mother Nature in their normal stuff, 
you need natural to, habitat. In the natural habitat, you cannot yeah. do log spreads. Okay. Okay. Or that's not my suggestion. For some, maybe at some factories does it, but it will change. Yeah. Play, yeah, right? yeah. Right. Well, even on the vents too, it's like sort of a socks, a, a soft box press. I mean, like the the corners are sort of rounded. Um, yeah. But and also a thing that I really notice about this, and it's not as common on Mexican San Andreas. At least it seems like in the industry, it's a very oily wrapper. It's it's got some oil to it, and very indicative to like flavor to it. Where sometimes it seems like some Mexican San Andreas seem to be rustic, almost in appearance, more dry. Um, but but this particular cigar has the like that kind of oil sheen to it. Um, that's that you, that's that, really awesome. Something that they that you will see that the San Andres does, the most of the time, you're gonna have a white ash. The white ash is because the San Andres wrapper has a lot of calcium. Okay. The other stuff is the the burn, uh, the combustion. When you don't have yeah. a combustion in the cigar, you, you're never gonna have an even burn. So actually the San Andres has a very good combustion, something that I can stop right there. The even burn, people, not always say why it's cool to have an even burn. I know that by the look, looks, looks nice, but the only way you're really gonna appreciate the blend is when every tobacco is burning at the same time. Mm, yeah. That's why so yeah. it's good to have an even burn. Yeah, well, and I mean, even on this Vince, I mean, it's like, I haven't touched this up once. It's burning completely even. We've even got some people here uh, watching the live show as well. And it's just, it's an even burn across the board, um, which really speaks to that, that type of blend. Oh, and mm -mm. I can tell you, for example, if you try that, I, I believe I'm going to ship you. So uh, a six pack or two six packs, you will try the cigars. And even that, not all of them have San Andres wrapper. You let's say 95% is going to have an even burn because it, this is human made. I mean, yeah, but we always try to be careful with the binder. We always try to use a binder that will help with the combustion to have an even burn. Yeah. It yeah. has to be aged properly. And if we're going to do something fermented with a little wine or something, that particular leaf, that's a binder, must age a little bit longer before we use it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and I've been told, as far as I understand, like something like with a Nicaraguan cigar, um, you have different regions of Nicaragua, and sometimes those regions can dictate different elements. Like one can be better if you want like uh, tasting elements of like more pepper or sweetness or even combustion as well. Mm -hmm. Is is it similar in the sense of like Dominican Republic, or or are you using multiple different tobaccos, like one for combustion, one for flavor, one for sweetness, that sort of thing? We use different type of tobaccos because that's why actually we can call cigar and not puro. You know, puro. Okay from Cuba because all, all of the tobacco that they use come from the same country. Right, right. So we call cigar because we different. We use different countries. I use Brazil, I use Ecuador. Ecuador, I use a lot of Ecuador because the, the, the it's very cloudy. So when you have cloudy, uh, right, right. High, the, the sunlight hits in 40 to 50% and that will allow the leaf to be bigger. If they okay. have direct sunlight, it's going to be a little bit smaller. And the, most of the time, you're going to get more filler. And in the top, more ligero. Right, right. And be so then second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I know, I mean, because it sounds like you're working with a lot of tobaccos. It's probably a hard question to answer. But <laughs> do, you, do you have several favorite tobaccos you like to work with, whether it's flavor profile or combustion or something like that? Let me tell you, I like the Habano as a binder. Even that I know is a very oily wrapper. Yeah. But the way we work it, the way we ferment it, it allow, it allow us to use as a, as a binder. But actually, let me tell you, I think the best binder is either Indonesian binder or Sumatra, actually. Okay, okay. Sumatra because it ha it's a, let's call it seco, you know, it's dry. So it's a yeah. very dry leaf and it will help with the combustion. I like San Andres. After I started with the Cuba Brazilian wrapper, which is actually a Criollo 98 seed grown in Brazil, and after that they call it Cubra. Oh, it okay. okay. That because it gives too much. Actually, let me tell you, some people be will believe that the San Andres really give you too much uh, in your palate, and I don't believe that. That's my 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 thing. 
what, uh -huh. I, what, the, what the senators give you is less sweat to work with and have a natural Maduro color wrapper. Okay. We give you a uh, combustion. It would give you a very white ash that I think it looks nice. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm not a fan of the Criollo 98 of filler. That's why the most of the time I use 20% okay. of Criollo 98. I'm not a fan, not because of the taste. It's because I don't want to be as common as the old Dominican cigars. I like HBA, which is okay. a Tabajo. I love Nicaraguan Jalapa, but every time you work with the Jalapa, you really must know what tobacco to, to, to blend with because the taste is very rare. So if you if you put a tobacco that is not supposed to go with the Jalapa, the cigar is going to taste like S-H-I-T. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... With working with different tobaccos um, and in your core line, do you, because I know some of the guys here and myself are a big fan of Connecticut Broadleaf. Do you have a Connecticut Broadleaf cigar? Not yet. I'm, I'm actually thinking about what type of brand should I do for that. Actually, the thing is broad, Broadleaf is going high. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah. happening with the Broadleaf is actually it's because it's being used for a lot of uh, things like rubber leaf, the things that you know you smoke with weed, and like that. so we don't we right, right, right. Do too much. So yeah. the demand goes high, the price yeah. goes Yeah, high. the price goes higher. Um, yeah, yeah. Something that I really want to work with is the Cameroon, but the real Cameroon, the only real Cameroon you can actually find it with Fuente because they, they finance for it, they, they did their effort to have it. Because let me tell you, uh, the African Cameroon can cost around 45 to $70 a pound. So you can imagine how much it's gonna cost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like wow. that. But what can what can we say? You know, um, the demand and the and a lot of guys that is is storage tobacco, and then after you don't find anything, you need to go directly to the guy, one way or another, to keep moving with the with the production. So you really, right. you really need to know how to play the game. To yeah. Keep demand. I'm not gonna say yeah. I'm gonna make a broad leaf, and right, then I'm right. gonna go in a quarter. How are you gonna feel? Right. Well, and, and, and it, it seems to, I mean, from kind of the outside perspective, not being a, a blender or manufacturer, but a retailer, it almost seems like Connecticut Broadleaf and Cameroon almost has a cult following. Like people, I know a lot of people that are like, oh, I smoke Cameroon cigars. And we have Jim Dougherty watching, loves Cameroon. Um, he watches a lot of our shows. Um, but it's true. It's like, what's your Cameroon offering? What's your broadleaf offering um but i also seem to think that in the industry there's a rise an uprise of mexican san andreas and i don't believe that mexican san andreas right now was the same tobacco it was during the cigar boom in the late 90s like nice. it, it seemed like people were like oh yes mexican san andreas is like not really good but now you're getting premium premium blends with mexican mexican san andreas Yes, it's because the most of the time it's because of the Casa to rent in Mexico. Those guys are doing a very good job with their with their tobacco because back in the days, who really want to grow tobacco in Mexico? Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. I was Cuba, the Dominican Republic, then Nicaragua, things like that. But something that I want to do, for example, I want to grow tobacco in Haiti. Yeah. Okay. Other people okay. do that, and it's the, yeah. it's in the same line as the Dominican Republic. Right. But the right, right. Line, it's a piece of S. H-I-T. <laughs> <laughs> so, so another question we have is um, your cigars, your blends, whether it's your core line, your Vince, are they inspired by your palate? In other words, are you blending towards your palate or is it kind of your brother's or where's that inspiration coming from? Uh, time. Time after I got, I had seven years in the industry and I say, this is what we need. Uh, honestly, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of a smoking Connecticut uh, every day. Connecticut, not the Broadleaf, the Connecticut from Ecuador, right. or the Connecticut right. from here. I'm not a fan of it, but I had to have it because I don't make cigars for myself. The cigars that I can do for myself doesn't even have a brand yet. We're gonna have right. that special reserve soon. Okay. But I did this for the guys to 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 support the brand if they like it. If they don't like it, I'm not gonna get the support from them. Because yeah. I'm not going to sell the cigars to me. How mm -hmm. much I'm going to buy a year? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. But the, we we believe that the San Andres as something is easy to work with. We needed a Maduro. We needed a Brazil. But instead of using the Arapiraca, 
that not, not many people have it right now in the storage. Or the thing is, when you have a paca, you know what a paca is of tobacco, you don't have a hundred percent of that paca to really work with the with the as a wrapper. So yeah. you have yeah. a lot of the desperdicios. I don't know how you say that. How, how you say desperdicios? Leftovers? Waste. Have waste. a lot of left waste. Yeah. You had a, you have a lot of waste. So that's yeah. why we decided to do that. And the Sumatra, for example, we did the Rook and we did the Finch. The Finch. Actually, and the Finch is your newest release, right? No. Oh, the, oh okay. we, we did the release of the Finch, Jagdo, Rook, and, and Kuko in IPCPR 2019. Okay. Since then, we haven't developed any more core lines. So right here that I can explain you a little bit, you know that we have a very colorful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, to explain a little bit how we did everything is that uh, how we can really penetrate the market if we don't have decades of experience or tradition or grandmother doing this. Right. So, honestly, I we said we don't really want to lie. What we need to do is actually to put it easier for consumers, retail shop, and the workers at the shop. So, we said, what's the symbol of USA? The symbol of USA is actually the eagle. So by that, I knew that I needed a bird in my life. So I say, if the eagle is the strongest bird, which one is the smartest bird? That's okay. actually the crow. Okay, okay. So yeah. I say, okay. The thing is, we're gonna work in a way that we don't work, we don't use more than two side levels to make a brand. So, because if you don't remember the brand, you will remember the color. That's why we go with the colors. So yeah, 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 yeah. That way we already started with the easy part. But crow, one syllable, we say, okay, how the crow look? It's actually black feathers and red eyes. That's why you see right there that the crow is black and red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the crow is actually the biggest of the crow family because the crow has more family, which is the raven. Yeah. Now it's some kind that I'm going to leave it for the end. <laughs> then the rook and the jack, though. So actually, let me tell you, the, the three core line, even though we didn't launch it everything at first, was the rook, the raven on kind, and the, and the crow. Because the crow is actually the biggest. The raven is the mid-side. That's why it's my medium body cigar. And the rook is actually shorter than the raven. That's why it's my mouth to medium smoke. So. Okay. Okay. We actually did. Are we really having a perfect branding? Let's see. If you mix blue and red, comes purple. So yes, we were having the perfect marketing over there. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see right there, I say no more than two syllables. So the young kind and the raven, not they have only two syllables. They're yeah, really yeah. only one syllable. So syllables. I'm Dominican, bro. Uh, <laughs> I am. But you understand me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, then we say, okay, we did a Connecticut cigar, so that's why we picked the Jack. The Jack is actually the European crow, and as we know, even that the things are changing now, they they smoke a lot of Cubans, so we needed a monster right there. And then I say, what if we need somebody's gonna come here and they say I want the first cigar in the morning and they're not a Connecticut smoker like me maybe. Yeah. So that's why we, we we went to the Finch, and the other one that is I'm missing right there is the Cuco, which is on two syllables, right? And yeah. you have black and gray. And then we say, okay, how we really gonna put things easier for the consumers? So the three most common questions in a retail shop is what's the wrapper. What's the strength and what's the size? Let me start right there with the size. I think the size is the most stupid one, not for the consumer, for the manufacturers. Because, yeah. bro, don't put the size on the side of the box. <laughs> yeah. How do you, you organize in the humidor? Yeah. Side by side, right? So, how right. are you going to be able to see the size? Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, that's why we put it in the front. So, that's why you see over there. Then when you open the lid, you have you have right there the the wrapper, San Andres. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the strength bar. So that way we don't need at first a shelf talker because we put an easier to the guys already. So 
after we did all of that, we did, okay, so we have the branding, amazing, but what about the slogan? Because the slogan, a company without a slogan, is like Roman Cup without ice. Where's the ice, man? So <laughs> I, we believe that we needed something coming from the marketing aspect to a personal level. So the thing okay. is, when we were, when I was starting in this, me and my company, a lot of people tried to put some walls. So we say, you know what? Can't claim my wings and follow my dreams. Yeah. That's why we did the slogan. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, after we got all of that, um, what can I say? Honestly, after that was just working hard as possible as, as we can. And we connect, and for example, big names as, 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 a, as a label is because we know we are in the, in the social media era and I we wanted to put it easier to the guys that maybe have problems to see too much or it's just a phone. I know phones are getting bigger. Back in the days, a small was cool. Now phones are getting bigger. Yeah, so yeah. We wanted to break it in a way that you don't even need to zoom in, you know? You don't need yeah. to do that. So that's why we right, do right. Something else that we thought about that even some companies don't do is how we make it easier for the guys to take off the band. That's why when you look up one of my cigars, let's see if I can find it right here. You do you see one of the of the cigars, we have the bird right there. So as soon as you're ready to take off the band, just pull off the bird. And that particular part of the band does not have almost nothing of glue. Oh, okay. So we're thinking about the guys that save the band. Yeah. The yeah. guys that make some dominoes tables or <laughs> things. Yeah. We can save the band and clean as possible. And if yeah. they don't remember the name and they don't remember the color, they come, bro, Eric, this is what I smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So that's what happened. And, and that's why we believe we really uh, connect because we try to make it easier to the guys. And you know, if you have that in, your, in the shop, you know that the human is wooden make, which is a light brown. And yeah. 80, or 80 to 75% of the boxes are wooden color. Right. So right. the only way you're going to stop and say, what's this? Is by having bright colors. So we really think and we really are sure about this. People get caught by the eye, which is the packaging. Mm -hmm. yeah. They turn by the experience, which is how they feel with the smoke that they did. The smoke right. cigar, and they stay by the vibe. The vibe is, can be me. If I'm a douchebag, yeah, the cigar, his cigars are good, but that guy, <laughs> he brought a lot. I don't know, man. You know what it does, right? So, so that's the way we, yeah, we yeah. and that's why I think we, we pop in and, and doing a lot of things. What can I yeah. say? In less than three years, we have over 400 accounts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, a few questions from from uh, Jim is one. He says that uh, the Finch is right now is somewhat hard to find, but also, what would you say is the most popular of your of your core line? What What do you see as kind of your flagship? Well, the number one is the Crow, but the thing is okay. that maybe because it's red, and something else okay. that is happening. There's a Dominican rapper that has over four million views uh, followers in Instagram. He got addicted to the crow and he's been posting a lot and really helping. The second one is the unkind that now I'm going to stop over there. No, let me give you the third. The third actually is the jackdaw. The Connecticut okay. smoke selling. The third okay. smoke selling is the jackdaw. The young kind got the number two because when we were getting popularity, so I got a call from somebody and, and the guy was cool with me. He just said, bro, we already have the Raven name. I'm like, if you have... The trademark certification, send an email to me, you know, we'll change it. Just let me see it. Because yeah. I have a hundred thousand bands sitting sitting <laughs> in the factory. Right, right, right. I said, I'll call you back. And I'm like, okay. Five minutes later, I got a call back from the lawyer. And the lawyer, he was very, very unkind with me. <laughs> really? Very unkind with me. And that's why. I say I realized that he was unkind. I realized that unkind comes from unkindness, which means flag of ravens. He didn't realize that he actually made me stronger. <laughs> and I actually thank him. I'm not even mad with him. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. That's why. That's why after we had that little issue that became a good problem, 
people were asking, like, what's the Raven? Because I don't find it anymore. I don't find it anymore. And, you know, it got the number two in sales right away. So the name it. Unkind. There, there you go. go. Right, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That actually helped us to, let's say, resolve last minute, last minute problems. Because even if you, you, you have your schedule, whatever, something, something, it's not going to get right. Mm -hmm. That's just life. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, and, and, uh, w w Jim also says that, uh, the, the idea of pilling the bird on the label is brilliant. There are a few other brands that I know of that is, that is the one complaint I'll get as a retailer is, Hey, the cigars are great, but it's a pain in the ass to try to remove the band. What and if, so what if you're drunk or you have big, <laughs> You need to think about the guys because let's let, let's be honest. You smoke cigars because you want, because you want to relax. It's not a rice beans and chicken. So at least if you know that the guys are gonna smoke cigars to relax, bro, just put it easy to the guys. Let's just yeah. put it as easy as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and something I noticed too, I mean, I'm not gonna drop any names, but in some of the heritage brands from Dominican Republic, no. it, it kind of gives the reputation of Dominican tobacco as being this kind of like mild very smooth but flavors not too punchy strengths not too punchy um mm -hmm. but honestly like the the vince smoking this does not fit in that category the and i mean and and like i said blackbird's somewhat new to us um but it, it's it's refreshing because it really has the it even has a punch like i said medium plus but also the flavor is very complex and it's enjoyable all the way through um yeah, we had yeah. someone wondering, are you going to be attending TPE or PCA this year? No, both. Uh, they yeah. charged me. They didn't give me money back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm saying about the, the, we had the problem with the pandemic or whatever. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we, they just save us the spot because we okay. are in and everything. So, yeah, we're going to be at TPE. We're going to be at PCA. Uh, hopefully, not hopefully, we're going to make it. We, we're going to make the first limited edition in doing PCA because we don't have time for TP already. I know TP is really growing strong, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The first time I went to TP was like five years ago, and it was maybe 10% cigars. The others was hookah, electronic cigarettes, things like that. Now, right, right. it's like, I think now it's like 65% or 60% right. cigars. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Jim says, see you at TP. Awesome. Jim, we're going to actually... Uh, We'll have to meet you there because we'll also be at TP. We're looking forward to it. Um, and with that, you kind of had mentioned a limited edition. I don't know how much you can talk about, but does Blackbird have some new releases for 2021 or 2022 coming out? Well, my, our goal for this year is to have the first limited edition in during the IPCPR, uh, PCA in this case. Okay. Um, and then we're going to drop something for Halloween. Okay. No crows. Right. Uh, to get this like that. So we right. Something I hope the guy from Tetra don't get mad with me because I know he do the little monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pete Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Much, respect, much respect to the guy, but yeah, you know, we we, we go kind of with the flow of, of yeah, roll of things and get along with the Halloween and things like that. Right, 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 right. Awesome. So a few questions as we're as we're kind of wrapping it up here that I normally ask some of the manufacturers. Um, one is how many cigars do you think that you smoke on like a daily basis? Depends because for example, the more I talk, the less I can smoke. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm smoking a cigar right now and I'm actually happy that I happen to relight it because you know, I'm the one talking, you have a, have a conversation. So let's say I'm not doing any talking. I do normally three cigars a day. Normally, okay. If I'm an event, in an event that I don't really need to talk too much, I can even do ten. Okay. okay. If I'm blending, I can do even twenty, but not entire cigar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not the entire cigar, maybe because I'm. Uh, you need to try a lot of things, but I believe even when you blend, it, you you must have no more than three first round, because okay. when you have eight or seven your mind i think doesn't really calculate the the blends of each one because you have too much to right. to think about at the same time so right. when i'm blending i typically spend a week without smoking even if i'm want to kill myself because i want to smoke but i really want to do it in a clean palette 
Okay. And that doesn't really come with one day without smoking. That's my experience. Yeah. Every human being is different. Right. But I just right. spend one week and then, all right, let's go to work and we're going to smoke. We're going to try different things. That's, right. that's my, my way of doing it. Okay. Yeah, no, I definitely think like when we do our tasting nights or when we are around the shop, we'll try to pick out flavors or I'll try to pick out flavors and notice. But I think after like cigar three, sometimes cigar four, it, it becomes almost muddled. It's hard because your palate is not restored and it's not. Exactly. So, yeah. And, and a lot of things depends on what you eat during the day. And it, yeah. would, change, it would change what what the, the performance of the cigars you feel that you have in your palate. Right. What you eat or if you feel, I don't know, ass in your stomach or something like that. Uh, I don't know. A lot of things can change. So yeah. I like to have goat cheese, for example. I like okay. to have almond, uh, black chocolate. Yeah. That yeah. really helps. Uh, sparkling water helps. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? And everything depends. You remember when you have, when you are trying cigars, you need to see a ruler. Yeah. But here is acidity and the other part is alkaline. Okay. So, with a cigar, I always try to go to the acidity part. Because when you smoke it, so when you eat something, it's trying to go back to the center. Okay. When yeah. You back to the center, you are really able to keep smoking with the tryouts. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Some people don't really pay attention to it. I know uh, Matt uh, Perez dropped a comment uh, saying that I'm a rookie. To some degree, I am. Uh, <laughs> the most cigars I've ever had in one day is four, um, and I own a retail shop. Um, on average, I'm about two or three. Um, but we uh, <clears throat> we got another comment saying that uh, they're wondering, actually, so like today, uh, the cigar you're smoking, what number is that? How many have you had today? This is my third. Okay. Yeah. This is my third. I did a small one today. I did two of these. This is, these are tryouts. You can see that they have the labels over there. Yeah. Because I'm smoking like, let's say, the, cold, the, the dog walker size. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, something yeah. like that. Because <laughs> I, I don't have that. I have a Corona, but the Corona that I have in the line is forty-four by six. So I don't know. I'm thinking about the short run. Right, right. But maybe you can be having it in your pocket, right yeah. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then the the other question, and I know this is a hard question to answer, and I understand oh, come is on, come on, <laughs> it's easier for me, man. <laughs> out, out of all the 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 cigars in your line, including the Vince, do you have a favorite or do you have several favorites? I know it's kind of like asking what is your favorite child, but you need you, you mean you mean from all the companies? Oh no, 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 for for you yourself, like out of your lineup, do you have a favorite out of them? From the core line? Bro, well, from the core, what I smoke the most from my core line is the Finch, the Unkind, and the Cuckoo. Okay. Okay. The Finch, I like it in, in, in Corona. The Unkind, I like it in Robusto. And in the Cuco, I like the Toro. Okay. That's okay. what I like in the corner. Yeah. And then, and then the last question is, when you're blending and stuff, do you try, do you have favorites out of other brands, other companies that you enjoy, or do you smoke mostly smoke your own? Mm, well, I'm not going to lie. Whoever tells you I only smoke my cigars is really lying to you. Because <laughs> you really need to see the you know they're lying. You know they're lying right away. They just want to sell cigars. <laughs> you know that. So let me tell you, cigars that I like. Um, what I don't think it's smoke the same now. But some cigars that I used to like a lot used to be like Imperiosa from Crownheads. That cigar was okay. good. Yeah, that was good. Uh, the first batch of Lanox. That was a good cigar. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Opus X Lost City. That's the only Opus X that I like. Okay, Lost City. Um, what else? There's, there's a couple. Uh, oh, the new Tabernacle, Red Band. Oh, yeah. In the, yeah, yeah. the Havana Seed from Foundation. Yeah. Very good. Nick Malik, you did a great job over there. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's the most, of the, the most of the thing that I can probably say. Yeah, that I like. Oh, this is a cigar from this young guy that is smoking very phenomenal, the Cigar Culture guy. That cigar, I don't know if you oh, tried it before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that cigar, very, very good. So, yeah, I smoke a couple. 
Uh, I believe if I if I say, oh, I don't like it, it's just my thing, I'm going to be maybe bragging too much. I believe in what I do, but I right. also think that there's a couple guys that really do a phenomenal job. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, you're probably familiar with Nick Perdomo at Perdomo's line. And I like the 20th anniversary. I don't know if it's the Connecticut or the other one. The Sun Grown? I think it's the Sun Grown 20th anniversary. Okay. The one that yeah. I, really, I like it the most. Yeah. And I mean, he kind of put it, I mean, cause he's been in the industry for 20 plus years. Yeah, and kind yeah. of like if you, if you want to know kind of what, what's going on in the industry, you kind of have to, this part of it is you have to smoke other people's stuff and kind of see what's going on. Yeah. 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 And you can learn from it. You know, right. I hope we can all be friends. I know sometimes uh, uh, the way consumers see it, it's not actually the way we see it from here. So right. we're really friends with a lot of people. Uh, let's say I'm friends with Eric from Espinosa. He's, a, he's, he's very cool with me. Uh, I'm friends with uh, Henderson from Adventura. He's very cool with me. Uh, there's a couple guys. So, oh, yeah. the other cigar that I think is very good is the Aston Symmetry. Oh, okay, the Symmetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. a bad cigar. It's a very good cigar. I can say that. Yeah. So, yeah. Perdomo, that's the only one, 20, 20th anniversary, that's the only one that I can say. And I know the Champagne is the one that sells the most. Right, 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 right. But I believe that Connecticut, for me, doesn't really give you too much. It's just blowing up smoke. Yeah. The good thing is no bitterness. Yeah, true. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not my thing. I prefer something with more, a little bit more power. For example, this guy did a phenomenal job with the Connecticut. The... The protocol misconduct, I believe, or something like that. The, the, the protocol Connecticut was a very good Connecticut because the, actually that Connecticut is a, is a full body seat car. Okay. It's wow. A, so mm -hmm. that's I can say that that guy did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> thank you again, Jonas, for joining us on the show. For those watching, uh, if you'd like to pick up a ticket for the uh, tasting this Friday night, we're smoking the Vince, and we're going to be pairing it with either a whiskey or a brandy or something like that. Go ahead and click on the link in this video. It will direct you to the tickets on our website. They're going to go very fast. This cigar is phenomenal, so thank you so much for giving this offering. Um, it's definitely complex. It's definitely in that medium-plus range, and it's really... For Maduro, it's very unique, um, and I enjoy it. It's not just your kind of kick you in the teeth, full bodied Connecticut. I mean, uh, Maduro, but it's it's excellent. So thank you so much. Wow, it's my pleasure, man. <laughs> I try awesome. to do the best. And uh, after talking with you, I'm gonna have to start really looking into Blackbird cigars. I'm gonna have to try some more, and we'll see if we can get a few in the humidor. I can ship you something. Let me see. Do I have your address? I think uh, you blocked, I I think you blocked me from Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I I'll send you I'll send you the address uh, for sure. <laughs> of course, of course, man. Let's let's make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's make it happen. Just send me an email or or DM me, and we're gonna make it happen. I know we can do a lot of things over there, and I hope I can go there and make an event. Have yeah, a drink no, or I was gonna say I know that I know that you uh, did a lot of traveling, and some of that was sedated during this last year. But you know, if you ever want to. Be out in California area. It would be pretty cool to have you in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, what the the Hollywood part? You know where you have the hills. I think. Yeah. Over there. Honestly, I love California weather. <laughs> yeah. Weather over there is very like amazing, but the cost of living, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Don't I know it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Over there, guys. I don't know how you got how you guys make it over there because if you guys yeah. if you guys see the prices that we have of big houses in the Dominican Republic, you guys are all gonna be there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the 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 weather was very very nice. I, yeah. I really like it. I, I but I got to realize that the lucky number over there, everything costs one million dollars. I'm like, <laughs> okay, one million for this? Okay, yeah, let's go. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even even tobacco tax. I mean, California state tobacco tax is fifty seven percent. So that's, that's a lot, man. That's, that's a lot. Crazy. Well, it's better than Alaska. That's true. It's better yeah. than Washington as well. Alaska, Washington, fan. It's crazy. <laughs> hey, I sell to Kuwait two twenty. Wow. Bahamas two hundred. But then, but then I like I have a friend out in Arizona. 
And he's like, oh, it's 22 cents on it every cigar. I'm like, what? This is, it's nothing. So, and I mean, Florida, is is there any tax on Florida? Only sales tax. Yeah. Which is 7% cool. in Miami, 6% in Broward County. That's in, even cheaper than our sales tax in California. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, because of living over there, guys, I don't know how you guys really make it over there. <laughs> it's, it's very crazy. In Rhode Island, is 50 cents. For cigar, New Hampshire, okay. no tobacco tax. Wow. Well, that's yeah. why you see probably that the East Coast have, can say, a little bit, not a little bit, more power in the cigar things because, you know, PA, you have a lot of things over there, all that stuff. It's right. because of the taxes. I hope one day we have just one type of tax in the whole country and everybody's happy, whatever. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, have, I see people that goes from Massachusetts to New Hampshire to buy cigars because Massachusetts is 40%, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if you keep it everything equal, they just go. The people just gonna go to the to the place that they feel better. Right. The vibe, they know the owner, or they just chill over there. I think it's gonna be a better competition. Right. A more right. Fair, more fair competition. If we yeah. have just why well, just you know put fifty cent or a dollar and that's it. I yeah. got first thing, whatever. It's not gonna be a, a, a huge thing, but right. You no. Know, right. They want to do a lot of things against cigars, but the weed is phenomenal, right? What? Yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Jonas. It was a pleasure talking to you uh, and a pleasure smoking the cigar. So Thank we'll you. be in touch and we'll hear hopefully more from Blackbird Cigars. Of course, man. Take care, man. All right. You too. Thanks again.